Let's talk about archiving pages in Confluence. If you have Confluence Standard or Premium, one of the key features that you have available to you is that you're able to archive pages as opposed to deleting them outright. Now, towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you a really neat solution as this video is sponsored by my good friends over at Midori, and they have a plugin that it makes Confluence archiving way, way better. In fact, the name of their application is Better Content Archiving for Confluence. A very, very simple yet very, very intuitive name and one that we're gonna find out in this video why they actually earn that better archiving title. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. If you've been using Confluence for a while, then you know that creating pages is something that your users are absolutely going to do. And depending on the number of years that you've been in Confluence, your team may be creating hundreds if not thousands of different pages and the information in those pages might become stale or rotten over time. And what that basically means is pages are sometimes just not updated or they're just forgotten. They just fall into the abyss that is Confluence and people all over your company just create, create, create pages, putting information out there, overwhelming your entire Confluence ecosystem with just information that is just everywhere. But when you hire new people, when you, and heck, even just for regular people in your company, how do they know which information is relevant, which information has been updated, and which information is actually important to them to do their job that is actually accurate, right? And this is a really, really big problem that many, many companies, regardless of the tool, right? Confluence is not unique to this problem. Any note-taking, any knowledge management system is gonna have this kind of a problem. So what Atlassian allows you to do is they allow you to archive pages. And so you can archive your pages to kind of like brush them to the side because you don't want to delete information. You don't want your information to be completely gone. You want it to be there for historical preservation, but you also don't wanna always show all the bad information to your team. And so, Naturally, we want to archive pages. And naturally, when you're in standard or premium versions of Confluence, you have the ability to archive your pages. But this is a very, very manual process and one that requires a lot of effort and a lot of energy, a lot of calories on your team to orchestrate and just get correctly. So what ends up happening is people just ignore the problem. You just leave your Confluence pages alone and you end up with this nightmare of a management problem that just is not healthy for anybody. So because of the outdated information, because of the overwhelmingness, because of everything else that is going on, your teams just end up reproducing, making new pages that are hopefully now kept up to date and more relevant. And it just adds and snowballs into the bigger and bigger problem that you have when it comes to just managing the workload and managing all the different pages that you have inside of Confluence. Maybe you're a new team, maybe you just started using Confluence, so you're kind of, hey, I'm not worried about this yet, but trust me, when you're a well-oiled machine and you're using Confluence for six months, a year, five years, 10 years, trust me when I tell you, you are gonna be overwhelmed with the amount of information that's in your Confluence. And so you wanna watch out for pages that haven't been updated in forever. You wanna watch out for information that's duplicated. You wanna just find out if your documentation is even being updated, right? Because a critical portion of delivering and creating a product is that that documentation is always up to date. And it's just not easy to find out this information. And so, we are going to talk about a better way of managing this, right? We don't want to have these duplicate pages. We don't want to have this overwhelming feeling and overwhelming sensation of like, ah, I'm just drowning in the sea of confluence messes. So let's talk about what you're able to do with this better content archiving for confluence. Trust me when I tell you that this is a game changer. So let's take a look inside of Confluence and explore how we can use this amazing plugin to make everybody's lives infinitely better. So now that you know that there's a potential problem that you may have millions and millions of Confluence pages, let me show you how to deal with that chaos. This solution is actually quite elegant and I really, really do enjoy utilizing better content archiving by my good friends over at Midori. So let's take a look at how you can manage all of these pages that need to be archived or updated. This solution is gonna be quite elegant. I really think you're gonna like it. So inside of Confluence, 
Once you install Better Content Archiving, you're going to be able to go to your space. And there's a couple of things that you want to do, and I'm going to walk you through those steps now. So first, you want to go into your space and go to Space Settings. And then you want to go to your General Permissions under General. From here, you're going to make sure that the Better Content Archiving for Confluence, um, it doesn't need all of these permissions. I just set them because... I like to give it all the power, but you realistically, you only need to make sure that this archive one is configured and set up to a green check mark. So as long as the Better Content Archiving for Confluence has the archive power, we're going to be just fine. That's all you need in order to proceed with the rest of this demo. Now comes the fun part. So automatically, there is not a whole lot that you have to do here, folks. Automatically, this plugin, once it's installed, once you've given, this, given it this power, it's going to go and it's going to figure everything out for you. It's going to do some really, really cool things. And it's going to find a lot of interesting pages that you may or may not be aware of. Let me show you how to do some of the configuration so that you can control what pages get archived and when. So within Confluence, you're going to click on the little gear that's going to take you to the main admin settings. And on the left hand side, we are looking for better content archiving. Once we're there, we're going to click on that. And then we're going to find this configuration section here. And we want to click on this automation configuration. Once you're there, you're going to be able to add new schemes or you can just modify the existing one that I have there. And if I click on that, you can see that you can add new automations to this existing scheme or you can create a whole new one. But check this out. This one right here is essentially my archiving one that I've been using for this demo. And so as you can see, it's enabled. There's a schedule. And if you're like me and don't really know how to use cron jobs too well, don't worry because all you got to do is click on this little icon with the little stars. And when you do that, you're going to get a little cheat sheet that gives you some examples on how to set this up just the way you need it for you and your team. But this basically says, hey, at this particular time, however this thing is translated into, then I'm going to execute the CQL query down here. And this basically says if anything is in the status of to archive, whenever this cron job criteria is met, that's when I'm going to execute. And the action is that I'm going to archive it. Now you do have a smart archive coming soon. You have the ability to delete and then you can go check out any other automations that are available. In addition to these options, I want to let you know that Midori is solicitating additional feedback. So if there's something cool that you would like to see, let me know in the comment section so that the vendor can see all your great ideas and hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe one of your great ideas will be implemented into this product. Now that you know how this is all configured, let me show you how this app actually works. This could be done at a global level or at a project level. And in this particular example, I'm going to show you just the project level. So if we click on better content archiving over here on the left side in your space under apps, it's going to go and it's basically going to do a quick analysis of your space and it's going to look into every single page. Now, keep in mind that my space is just for demonstrations, right? So I don't have a whole lot going on here, but I anticipate that your spaces are going to have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of pages, because I'm pretty sure you are going to be creating a lot of information, especially if you're a company who does work for a living, right? If you make money, you most likely have a lot, a lot of different Confluence pages. So yours is going to look a little bit more different than mine. But as you can see, I have six pages here. All of them are being tracked. And then we have these statuses. Now, these statuses are out of the box. I didn't do any special configuration, but you can basically tweak this stuff to your liking. Now we have pages that are excluded. So these are going to be pages that we don't want to be involved in this whole process of archiving. We have the to archive section here, which is really what we're going to be focusing on for this video. We have pages that have a specific expiration date. We have them pages that expired after that expiration date. We have pages that haven't been viewed by people. And then we have all the pages that are up to date. Trust me when I tell you, you want that last number to be as high as possible because that means that people are interacting and updating your pages. Everything else on the left, they're going to be worthy candidates for what I'm about to show you. So all of this happens automatically, but there's not a whole lot you need to do. But just because I don't have a good setup here, we're going to go and I'm going to show you how you could do this manually because like I said, this application is all autonomous. It, there's really not a whole lot that you have to worry about 
is you just install it and let it run. But if you wanted to fine tweak it, you do have the ability to come in here and do these things manually. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into one of my old pages. I'm just gonna go into this My Demo page here. And you're gonna notice that every single page up now that you've installed this plugin has this new little section over here for a status. And so this is the content status that is coming from Better Content Archiving. So you can click into it. And once you click into it, it's gonna take a second here to load, but you're gonna get information as to who viewed it and who last updated it. And of course, it's gonna give you the status. But if you wanted to, you can click on these ellipses here and you can set it to expire or you can set it to archive or you can exclude it, right? You can take it out so it doesn't get impacted because part of this automation of this entire tool is that you do get an email notification at least once a day giving you, hey, here's everything that's expired. Here's everything that's set to archive. And it just gives you a good synopsis, a good overview of where all your different pages are. So if you don't wanna get notified for a particular page, you can kick it out. But I'm just gonna set it to archive, right? I'm basically gonna say, hey, you know what, this page, it's I don't need it anymore, and so I want this one to archive. Now again, there's logic in the tool that's gonna automatically set these archiving rules, but if you wanted to hand jam it, right, if you wanted to force the archive, this is the way you can do it. And I'm just doing it again for the purpose of the video because once you set this thing up, it's, you just set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You also have the option to archive the descendant pages. I don't have any pages on this one, so it doesn't matter. And yeah, so I'm just gonna set today's date and hit set. And so once I do that, notice what's gonna happen to the status of this particular page. It changes from up to date. It's no longer gonna be up to date, but rather it's not gonna say to archive. And so the tool has basically flagged this page as a page that's gonna be archived. And so as you can see here, I didn't even have to refresh. It is now to archive. So with that said, now when we go to better content archiving back to the app, it's gonna do its thing again. It's gonna go run an analysis. And you're gonna notice that this time we have one page to archive, right? And then the up-to-date came down by one and now we have four expired, right? So what it, for its logic, we can also click on them and see, hey, what's gonna be expired? As you can see, these have been not updated in a year. So this plugin is gonna think, hey, this is these are worthy pages because they've expired. They haven't been touched in a year. They're, they're great candidates for maybe archiving, but at least for you to review. Now, with that said, once all that's set up and you're good to go there, you're gonna wanna go to space settings, right? Now this, again, is because I am manually doing this. Once those pages are in the right column, whether they're to archive or to expire, the automation rules that are built into the plugin are automatically gonna take care of archiving or removing pages for you. But I'm not gonna wait until midnight or whenever this rule is set to run. I'm going to do this now for the purpose of this video. So this is how you do it if you wanna do it manually. But again, keep in mind that if you're just doing it automatic, it's just gonna happen behind the scenes. But assuming you wanna just you know do it manually, you click on the space settings. Under integrations, you're gonna see better content archiving. You'll be able to click on that. And then you're gonna be able to see basically the, the configurations for this application. Now we're not gonna change any of the notifications or anything like that. We're just simply gonna execute the current uh, automations because there's no modifications to the configuration that have been done. This is all straight out of the box. And so I'm just gonna click on that execute automations. And so after a few seconds, that's gonna run and it's gonna find any page and that's gonna hit the criteria of, hey, I need to be archived, right? So any page in this space, you can do this globally. You do have the option to run this globally. And more importantly, you also have the option independent, right? Because I am a, a reviewer of apps, if you will, right? But Confluence, if you're on premium and uh, only because premium allows you to do automations, right? Because you can archive, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can archive pages in standard or premium, but it's a very manual process. You have to go in and do this whole thing yourself. You have to figure out the logic and, and you have to basically come up with the criteria. This better content archiving is going to help you with that. It's going to go and do an analysis for you and give you a recommendation. So it's all uh, uh, done automatically for you. But you can do the archiving yourself if you want to not use the plugin. You can always go to every single page and archive the page. If you're on Confluence Premium, you can set an automation rule and you can use the built in statuses, but you're limited to just five statuses. And Confluence, when that automation rule is run, you are gonna get a ton of notifications for every page that's being archived. This tool is going to do it like in a list 
and it's just going to do it a little bit more elegantly and a little bit more quietly. You're still going to be notified that a page has been archived, but it's all compressed as opposed to a thousand different emails that are going to come at you. So anyways, this thing has ran. It, as you can see, it only took 16 seconds. And now I can click on view results. And when I click on that, it's, it's going to tell me that it was a manual execution, that it ran successfully, and that one content was archived. And so we can click on close here. And now to find out what got archived, I just need to go all the way over here on the left side, bottom left corner. You might not be able to see it. And when I click on that, you are not going to see the pages that were archived. So as you can see, about an hour ago, I archived this one. And now this one's been archived. And that's it. That's really all you got to do. And again, this setting is all done manually, but you can let it just run autonomously. And I hope you really enjoyed this video because I think it makes archiving pages way, way easier. And it just takes that extra level of cognitive load off of you because you don't have to be worrying about these things. And, and on demand, your team is able to say, hey, we don't need this page anymore. We're just going to change that status and flip it over to archive. And so you can let the rules kind of figure it out for you, or you can just set them to archive yourself. And so get a lot of flexibility here. But most importantly, you're going to be able to clean up those pages. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's no big deal, right? But again, if you have a, a few dozen pages like me, probably no big deal. But if you're a, a good company that's doing good work all day long, I guarantee you, you're going to have thousands if not hundreds of thousands and enterprise customers. You're probably going to be pushing closer to a couple million pages, right? So that becomes chaos. And you want to just control the chaos just a little bit and you can do it manually, right? But you're going to sit there for many, many, many hours, tuning it off, tuning everything, doing it all manually. Or you can just get this better content archiving plugin, try it out and let it take care of it for you. One little quick disclaimer that I did want to mention. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, archiving is a paid feature, but deletion is not. So the deletion automations that are built into better content archiving will actually work for all the tiers, including free. So if you just want to clean up your pages and not necessarily archive them, keep in mind, they're going to be permanently deleted. You do have the ability to run those automated deletion jobs, which are again, going to delete those pages completely for you. Again, not as good as archiving because archiving will still retain the information, but still a good choice if you're just looking to clean up your Confluence spaces. So now that you know how to automatically and manually archive pages, the next logical question you may be asking yourself is, how do we control the status of these pages? Well, guess what? That is the topic of the next video that we're going to be doing from Midori. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure you drop a like for this video and stay tuned because we're going to be talking about how to manage statuses within Confluence. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you check out the link in the description below so you can start your free 30-day trial. And don't forget to leave an app review. And finally, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. So